How do I meditate? Hey guys, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. So I want to jump on and do a quick video on how I meditate. There's a lot of different methods out there that people meditate to. Some people get into the zone, which is a different vibration energy than um, meditation, what I'm talking about. Um, it's a great way to get zoned in, tuned into the present moment, but it's a definitely a different energy and vibration than meditation. And so how I meditate which was shown to me when I first started my spiritual journey. And a lot of people say that they struggle uh, with meditation. Um, basically, uh, it's, it's just the fact that you're taking back your mind, right? You're taking back control of your mind. And a lot of people struggle with that because they've let their mind be rampant uh, for like ever, <laughs> you know, up until the point where you are, where you're deciding to start meditating. And so it may um, be a little bit of a struggle for you to quiet the mind, but there's nothing wrong with the quiet the mind meditation because it gives you a peace and relaxation. You can just let everything go, right? And so that's the purpose of a quiet mind meditation. Um, for me, it is. And a lot of people are like, oh, well, that dumbed you down. No, it doesn't because you can pick your mind back up at any time that you want it. It's just silencing your mind so you can actually contemplate because when your mind is constantly on these spirals um, about certain things and topics and you're just ruminating on it, you can't think straight, right? And so it leads to things like frustration, anger, self-sabotaging, um, blaming others, you know. And so when we actually turn in and look at ourselves and we start working on ourselves and able to quiet our mind, we can contemplate and kind of think about it. And we slow down the mind by quiet mind meditation, right? And so we slow it down so we can actually be in the present moment, right? And so just being, we release everything that we are a part of, that we're taking up as who we are and identity, right? And so that has nothing to do with dumbing you down. <laughs> it actually helps you because you're making the divine connection um, of who you are, right? And so you can always pick the mind back up when you're done with the meditation. It doesn't dumb you down, right? And so I've been meditating for a very long time. And so my meditation has gone from um, continuum, like cycles and patterns of, you know, my ingrainment and my upbringing to where I am now, right? And so whole, it, it's been a very positive experience. And so I'm not dumbed down because of it. <laughs> you know, that's an illusion because people are, oh, well, why do you not want to think? It's not dumbing you down. It's quieting the mind so you can grab hold of your mind and you can be in control of what you think and you can monitor your thoughts. And so you can choose your thoughts because when your thought is in chaos, your thoughts are choosing for you. And so you're on the victim side, right? And so you're not contemplating or focusing your intention where you not need to be. And so that's where people want to believe in, you know, diagnosis of ADHD and all this other stuff. It's because you're allowing it, right? And so the mind has control of you when you're not in control of it because it's kind of like it's set on a program. And so the program's run in the past of what's been before, what you've accepted for yourself. And so the programs just run and you follow it, right? And so the quiet the mind meditation helps to slow that down so you can see and choose from it and change your patterns not live by them. And so the changing of the frame mind is about slow meditation, quieting the mind, being in presence, being quiet, getting away from the noise, going out in nature, just sitting and being present in the moments, right? And so some spiritual teachers are out there teaching that you just sit and you just be. You can sit in a quiet meditation like a Buddha, or you can sit and just observe like Eckhart Tolle would do. You know, there's different ways of doing it. It's just quieting the mind and the mind to stillness. So you can actually twist and turn that and tweak it to where you're in control of your mind and your thoughts and you're not running on the backup programs, the conditionings, the beliefs, you know, all that. And so when you can do that, you're starting to take control of your life. So with the meditations that I do when I first started my journey was literally just sitting in yogic style um, cross the legs, right? And so mudra, right? And just focusing on the breath, just focus to one point. And Abraham Hicks talks about just focus on one thing. And so what I was taught was just to focus on the breath, coming in, going out, coming in, going out, 
coming in, going out, right? Which then later led to my out-of-body experiences when I would do that. Like I would actually literally have out, I got to a point where I shifted from the 15 minute mark to like an hour and something mark meditation, I would come out. But during that, I was on my journeys, you know, in out of bodies. So it progressed over time. And then from there, it progressed to where I actually was able to start controlling my breath. So I was able to stop my breath and I wasn't breathing. I was just existing, right? And so it doesn't dumb you down, right? <laughs> right? There's processes that get you. And then there's even more beyond stopping the breath, right? Um, and so if you keep going with it, it, it evolves, Right, and so your meditation practice will evolve in the way that it needs to. But as far as the practice that I started out with, is just following the breath in and out, going all the way down to the bottom chakra, all the way up and out, all the way to the bottom chakra, all the way back out, and just keep doing that until you, when you start feeling that you can't do it anymore, do some more because you're going to break that um, glass ceiling or that you know how they talk about a glass ceiling. You can't go any further. You feel like you can't go any further because you're starting to take control of your mind and your mind is in resistance you're starting to take control of everything in your life and that's where the resistance comes in because your mind is like an entity of itself and it's like no i'm in control no you're in control right and so you need to push past these boundaries that you have set for yourself and so if you give up or you say oh, i can't do it you know, you're the one that's allowing it to happen. You're allowing your mind to be in control of you and you're not taking back your power. And so if you're wanting to take back your power, this is a great, you know, process for you. Um, and so a lot of times, you know, it'll help you with controlling of your thoughts, what you think. No, I don't choose that. I can choose something else, right? And so um, instead of thinking negative thoughts or uh, you can think positive thoughts because I can think about it on the stream of conscious. What am I thinking? Right? You're, you're becoming the observer. You're stepping away out of sight of your thoughts. So you're now the observer through your meditation so you can be in control. When you're the thought, you're not in control. When you're the observer of the of thought, you are in control. There's a difference in the timeline. And so the expression of self is where you are on that timeline. So you're either the thought expressing itself in thought or you're the observer expressing itself from that point of view and you get to choose. You're more on the level of freedom. And then the further away from your thoughts that you get, right, you're more free, right? And so the contemplation of it is where that comes in to helping you navigate your life, right? And to change and shift where you are on the timeline, where you are in the moment, right? And so you can change your life, right? And so the contemplation, meditation is what they're saying to call it. So quieting the mind, contemplation, um, allows your thought to process without you being attached to it. It's not an attachment from your thought. So you're no longer the actor, but you're the observer of it. And through that, you can change, you know, your life, right? And so expanding your awareness of it allows other things to come in and you're not just running on those background programs, right? And so being from that space, observing and, blur, you know, you can do it that way, you know, focusing on the breath or whatever it is that you have that one focus. Living on the beach for about five years was very helpful for me because I could um, shift into the waves. You know, that was my meditation and it was strong enough for me to keep my stillness there. And as the practice evolved, you know, I went into doing out of body experiences, things like that. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. I mean, it's just something that happened for me. And so with that, that's how it evolved for me. And then I got into the um, going further beyond, you know, that level. I was able to start controlling my breath and then controlling my body and tuning into my body and doing energy healing and psychic good work and then the channeling, right? And so you're open to receive. So one of the meditations is a great one to start out with is, you know, the quieting of the mind. And that is just focusing on the breath. And so when you focus on the breath, just keep going. And if you come to a place where you feel resistance, you can't do it anymore, do it some more. Break that boundary, right? Break that boundary of the mind and start taking control of your mind. And it'll allow you, it'll, it'll shift and then you'll be open, right? And to move into something else. And then more awareness comes in for you to help you. But when I'm sitting, I'm sitting Indian style. You can use a pillow. You can be flat on the floor. You want to have your left um, heel right in the base chakra matched up. And then I sit there 
I use a pillow, so I'm I'm straight up. And a lot of people are like, well, this the sitting position doesn't matter. Well, I mean, it kind of does because you want your chakras to be in alignment, right? And so depending on their meditation, you know, it can be therapeutic or it can be the intention, you know, of what we're doing. And so for me, I, I was sitting to where my body was automatically just in an upright position. So my chakras were all in the line. Because if you're sitting like this, you're, you know, you're kind of not in that straight line. That's why they say to sit like that. So, and then I have my hands like this, right hand on top of my left hand, and then I close the circuit. So energy runs through the circuit, and I have this in my lap. So I'm sitting like this, and then I'm just finding my energy in my space. And so the minute you close your circuit, you have your heel at your base chakra, and you have your hands like this sitting in your lap. And your body will automatically just go into the space and now some people will say well my body starts swaying and that's okay some people say don't sway but your body is trying to adjust to the energy and find the best right space so just allow it to settle in and just be in that present moment of it and allow yourself to find that space without you doing it just let your body just do it and find it you may find that your body is just adjusting itself tweaking and things like that but you're you're running the circuits in your body when you're when you're bringing this into awareness and then just focus here on your breath in and out in and out have your intention i know this is can be hard because it's almost like uh tapping your head rubbing your stomach and jumping on one foot at the same time but if you have your circuit set up right you find your spot with your chakras in your alignment and then you you're focusing on your breath in and out You have intention here on your forehead, your third eye, and then your intention in your heart, right? And then that brings everything to a stillness because what you're doing is you're running your breath through your third eye and your heart and you're connecting them all, right? And then allowing, and then you'll start feeling energy and vibration and shiftings and you know things going on and just let it go, just let it fall, right? And then just be the observant, just sit there. And if your mind, comes in and thinks thoughts, let it, right? You don't have to go with it and join it, right? This is the practice of not following your thoughts, right? Don't follow your thought. It's okay. There's a thought. Let it go. Sit, go back to your silence. Okay, another thought comes up. Because this is the way you're, and you're learning about your thoughts by doing this, right? You're learning about how your thoughts are observing, how they come up, how they arise. And when you're able to just sit and be the observer, you're in the practice of it. And so you can be that out in the world when things are coming up or arising that might trigger you or might um, have these experiences that you're not wanting or in your situation that you're all stressed out. You can think clearly in that situation without responding in chaos to it, right? And so the process of evolution through this is helping you to maneuver life on a daily basis, right? Because when you are now living your life in the observer, not as the thought, then you're in control of your life. It's when you're the thoughts, you know, that you're not in control. You're letting your thought be in control of you, you know. And so to be the observer is the best way to, you know, maneuver through life, you know. And so if you do that practice every day, um, it grows and grows and grows. And you can have other experiences. You can have out-of-body experiences, um, you know. And through that, you know, I was able to get to a point where I was being guided you know, because when you are in control of your thoughts and you're willing and ready to step out of being the thought and you're willing to be more of the observer, you're able to tune into source, your higher consciousness, and your higher self and consciousness will start guiding you to the next step once you're willing and ready to be and not in, in the thought. You know, the actor, the person, the identity, the role, um, it'll guide you and it'll guide you to different things. And so as my journey progressed, you know, I got into healthy eating, it progressed me into um, different things like the out-of-body experiences, having those, um, and then, uh, you know, went further, you know, waking up my abilities, uh, my third eye opens, and then, um, you know, you name it, it kind of evolved through there, you know, the practice. And so still today, you know, I meditate you know, as much as I can. So it is part of the practice, right? It's just to set your intention, make it part of your day routine and implement everything, you know, along the journey.
So hopefully that helps. If you have any questions on getting started with meditation, you can book a session and I'm there to help you. Um, and that's it. Thanks for tuning in. Happy journeys.